Good morning. Thank you all so much for coming out this morning for what I think is an incredibly important announcement uh, and frankly a series of announcements that the Chief Judge has done. Uh, this one, as you will soon hear, resonates for lots of very important reasons. Uh, I'm Richard Aborn. I'm President of the Crime Commission. I certainly welcome all of our many friends back and more than welcome all of our new friends. You are welcome to join us at any time. We're absolutely delighted you're here, though I can't always promise you are a rock star, the Chief Judge. Um, I want to indulge in something that none of us really ever take time to do anymore, which is probably unfortunate, which is just step back for a second and put this morning's presentation in a bit of context, and then I want to introduce Howard Milstein, who is our sponsor this morning and the sponsor of so much that goes on in our city and certainly goes on with the Crime Commission. If you think about the, the penal law in a broad sense, the penal law is really a reflection of sort of our moral values, this long list of things that one cannot do. And then in the broader context of the criminal justice system, we think about how to enforce first those set of prohibitions. And then I would say equally, if not more importantly, we think about how to prevent those events from occurring over and over again. And you have seen this shift take place in the courts, within the prosecution bar, and within policing over the years as the courts have moved from pure judicatory bodies to increasingly problem-solving courts, as prosecutors expand their role into thinking about the pure prosecution of crime to thinking four square about how to stop some of these crimes from happening. And there's some great examples in the room. Kathleen's here, Sy's here, Judge Brown is here, Dunneman, yeah, he's, you know, he's over there. I mean, these are really living examples of DAs who have embraced this ideology that we need to expand our sense. And clearly the PD, the NYPD, is more and more thrusting itself into this arena of how we stop these things from happening before they actually occur. So this morning's presentation by the judge and this morning's announcement, which is about human trafficking, is particularly important. You know, we live in a nation that has stared into the brutal face of slavery. We know far too well the long-term ramifications of the most horrific of human crimes. And what the judge will talk about this morning is really in some ways a modern incantation of that. It is something that we cannot turn away from. It is something that has to come to the forefront. And the judge's talk, I think, really brings the courts and the DAs and the department and the police department four square again into fighting this horrific human tragedy. And I am therefore particularly pleased that we return to the Milstein criminal justice policy forums for this presentation. And in that, I'm very, very delighted to introduce Howard Milstein. The judge, Judge Lippman, has been making a large splash lately on a number, another topic which all the lawyers in this room know about, which is the requirement to do pro bono service. It's now a reportable offense. No, I'm kidding. You now have to report it uh, in your semi-annual filing. Law firms are reporting it. And judge, I'm happy to tell you, it's done what I think you intended, which is it sparked a bit of a competition out there. You no longer hear, how are you doing? You hear, so how many pro bono cases have you done lately? Because that's going to be, a, and I think it was a really smart, smart thing to do. And I think it's particularly fitting that Howard this morning is, is hosting this event because Howard himself is a lawyer and is himself someone who really believes in civic responsibility, not only for himself, but encouraging others, particularly young people, to do it. In fact, he, on a daily basis and on an annual basis, and I know this firsthand, dedicates one third of his time, his immense intellect, and his substantial resources to philanthropic causes. And it is something that many of us benefit from in fact, the whole city, if not the whole country, benefits from him. He has been, Howard has been a real, not only a, a supporter, but a steadfast innovator and, and thinker in the criminal justice space and in the counterterrorism space. Howard, and I've, he and I have had this discussion many times, really sees public safety and the security of our cities, of our states, and of our nation as a pillar of the country's future a key to its economic performance, a key to its prosperity, a key to its quality of life, and, it, and maybe most importantly, 
a key to its global competitiveness. We always must remain competitive on the global stage. You all know, and it certainly goes without saying, that Howard has been a mainstay of the Crime Commission. He has been a longtime supporter of the Crime Commission. He has for years sponsored this speaker series, which as some of you know has brought both domestic and international speakers uh, to us to talk about important issues of the day. And because of his ongoing commitment, we've been able to do that. He has also been willing to underwrite our new initiative on cybercrime. And I, I have to say, I'm grateful to Howard for a lot of things, but particularly grateful for that because in the not-for-profit space, it is very difficult to find what you might call venture capital, which is something to underwrite a new program in an emerging area of the law with not a crystal clear idea of where you're going, but a crystal clear understanding of the need to make a contribution in that area. And Howard has been more than willing to step up and support that. His support for law enforcement goes well beyond the Crime Commission. He has encompassed crime prevention uh, initiatives, technological enhancements. He's done training programs for the NYPD. He's done a number of projects with the NYPD. He has also co-chaired the COPE campaign, which provided trauma counseling to 9-11 first responders and their families. We all remember that horrific period. And he gave direct financial aid to Hurricane Sandy first responders. So when first responders need someone standing behind them, Howard is there, and he is always there. He is also a principal supporter of the Federal Law Enforcement Foundation. Um, it doesn't stop with Howard, I have to say. Abby's incredibly wonderful and super smart wife, uh, Abby, chairs the New York Legal Assistance Group, New York LAG, as it's known to us uh, in, the, in the legal community, which is, as you all know, if you practice law in this town, is one of the, if not the, leading provider of pro bono legal services to the poor, it, it completely encompasses everything the judge has been talking about, and she has really driven that forward with just a sheer determination uh, to make that group just thrive. And we are all grateful for the work that she does. She is also, uh, she also chairs the Governor's Judicial Screening Committee for the First Department. Now, judges, that doesn't mean go talk to her. <laughs> Hands off here. We're not doing that here. But I did want to note that. And just to return to Howard for a moment, the list is so long, I could go on for the entire morning. Um, if what I told you wasn't enough already, Howard also chairs the New York State Thruway Authority. And you wonder how he goes from, from crime stuff to prevention stuff to first responder stuff to the Thruway Authority, and it's because of the versatility of his own, his own mind. Um, Howard was the person that drove the New Deal to build a new Tappan Zee, I was going to say rebuild, but to build a new Tappan Zee bridge and actually accomplish something that government never accomplishes, which is he did both accomplish the saving of time and the saving of money and substantial money, money that runs into the billions, not, not pocket money, very serious money for the New York. So Howard, with all of that, many, many thanks for all that you do. You are an, just an enormous presence in our city and the state and the country. And may I ask you to introduce the Chief Judge. Thank you, Richard. Uh, well, it may not be apparent that there's a relationship between the Tappan Zee Bridge and crime, but a lot of people view the existing Tappan Zee Bridge as a crime. <laughs> the new bridge will be better, and uh, it's under construction. Thank you, Richard, for that introduction. We're pleased to support Richard and his work here at the Citizens Crime Commission, which is at the forefront of so many issues critical to New York and the nation. I also want to welcome our elected officials prosecutors and law enforcement professionals who are on the front lines of ensuring our public safety and homeland security. As you heard, criminal justice and public safety are very important issues to me, as they are, I'm sure, to all of you. If we're going to maintain a society that is stable, productive, and offers opportunity for all, we must be secure. But we need to balance our interest in public safety and security with the rights and liberties that form the foundation of our society. That's why the Crime Commission is so important and why the work of Jonathan Littman as the Chief Judge of the New York State Court of Appeals and head of our state's court system is so vital. Judge Littman has gotten to know my wife Abby as chair of the New York Legal Assistance Group and we were all together recently at a dinner in his honor where he gave an inspiring speech. The New York State Court of Appeals is 
often called the second most important court in the nation. The court of Benjamin Cardozo, Charles Brightell, my mentor, and more recently, Judith Kay. So it is my great honor to introduce Chief Judge Lippman this morning, who, is who so clearly follows in, these distinct in this distinguished tradition. Since his appointment to head New York's highest court in 2009, Judge Lippman has shown that he's not only an eminent jurist, but also someone who understands the court system from the inside, how it works, and how it could work better. Before assuming his current role as Chief Judge, Governor Spitzer appointed him in 2007 to serve as the presiding justice of the Appellate Division, First Department, where he served on the administrative board of the courts, the policy and rulemaking body of the New York State court system. And from January 1996 to May of 2007, he served as the chief administrative judge of all New York State courts, the longest tenured person to have served in that role. Indeed, Chief Judge Lippman's career in the court system spans four decades, starting as an entry-level uh, court attorney in New York State Supreme here in Manhattan. He truly has worked and earned his way to the top. Why is this important? Because Judge Lippman has seen how our criminal justice and court system really work, how day-to-day -day outcomes change the lives of all who find themselves engaged with our legal system. Thus, he approaches the law with a realist perspective with deep experience. His efforts at ensuring pro bono involvement as a requirement to be an attorney in New York State or his efforts at juvenile sentencing reform reflect this unique perspective. And that's why we're assembled today, to hear the ideas of our chief judge who knows the changes that must be made to accommodate the real, real world issues and problems that sometimes impede achieving true justice, the foundational goal of any civil society. With that, I give you Judge Lippman. Thank you, Howard, for that really uh, lovely introduction. Uh, I want to thank you for also sponsoring uh, the Milstein Policy Forum. I think it's so important that we talk together about criminal justice and public safety and all the things that so impact on the citizens of this city and state. And I want to thank you and Abby for all your good deeds. And we do so many things, I think, together that are so important to this state, and certainly Abbey Legal Services for the Poor could not be a more important issue in this city, this state, and this country. So thank you both, appreciate it, and I am delighted to be here at the Citizen Crime Commission's Milstein Policy Forum. I want to thank Richard and the Commission for inviting me here and uh, uh, for all the good work that you do, and Richard, it is, where are you, Richard? It is an absolute pleasure to work with you on criminal justice issues and all the policy issues facing our state. It really is a delight. I'm here today to talk about what we in the New York judiciary are doing to eradicate the epidemic of human trafficking, which manifests itself most prominently in our state in the form of sex trafficking a heinous crime where someone profits from forcing a person into prostitution. Human trafficking is a crime that inflicts terrible harm on the most vulnerable members of society, victims of abuse, the poor, children, runaways, immigrants. It is in every sense a form of modern day slavery. We cannot tolerate this practice in a civilized society, nor can we afford to let victims of trafficking slip between the cracks of our justice system. Starting today, the New York State court system will undertake an unprecedented statewide initiative to identify trafficking victims, refer them to services, and restore them to law-abiding lives as we confront this horrific practice head on with all of the resources at our command. I am announcing, with the collaboration of our justice system partners, the implementation of a comprehensive response to the problems of human trafficking in New York State with the establishment of the Human Trafficking Intervention Initiative. 
within the new framework that we are creating, New York will be a trailblazer, the first state in the nation to create a statewide system of courts designed to intervene in the lives of trafficked human beings and to help them to break the cycle of exploitation and arrest. The human trafficking courts in urban, suburban, and rural areas throughout this state will identify appropriate defendants charged with prostitution and related offenses and provide linkages to services that will assist them in, in pursuing productive lives rather than sending them right back into the grip of their abusers. We estimate conservatively that this new book program will open the door for thousands of people to escape a life of abuse and torture. And I use those words advisedly. Three pilot courts in Queens, Midtown Manhattan, and Nassau County have spearheaded our efforts and are already up and running. By mid-October, locations in every borough of New York City will be operational, and by the end of October, human trafficking courts stretching from Long Island on the east to Buffalo on the west will be available to serve trafficking victims, covering close to 95% of those charged with prostitution and trafficking-related offenses in our state. By so doing, we embrace an approach to human trafficking that is newly emerging among enlightened criminal justice thinkers around the country who recognize that all defendants are not the same and that the real perpetrators of crimes are often hidden from view. Trafficking victims need the kind of resources and services that can transform and save their lives.